dictionaries trace the source of the word statistics from the Latin status, the state, to the Italian statista, one skilled in statecraft, and onto the German statistik, the science dealing with data about the condition of a state or a community. The Oxford English Dictionary brings statistics into English in 1787. Florence Nightingale held that the thoughts and purpose of the deity are only to be discovered by the statistical study of natural phenomena. The application of the results of such study is the religious duty of man. Statistics is about matters of the highest importance in human affairs. It is about our comprehension of the world around us and how that comprehension affects the lives we live. Our health, wealth and well-being our understanding of the state of our planet and the condition of our local communities, our choices at work and play. When we make decisions, we draw upon a variety of conscious and subconscious processes. Politicians, advertisers and others know this. They know our biological needs and desires. They appeal to our emotions, what makes us feel good or bad about ourselves. They tap into our beliefs the deep spiritual guides that tell us what is right and wrong. Sometimes they present rational arguments, science or facts that back up their claims. We also know this. In the decision-making market, there are many buyers and many sellers trading emotional, spiritual and rational claims on our choices. And as with any market, it is good information that makes for a level playing field that is fair to all. Statistics provides a special kind of understanding that enables well-informed decisions. It appeals to our rational sides, our heads providing a balance to our sometimes wayward hearts. Evolution has taught us to spot patterns. Those best placed to identify the unusual have had a competitive advantage in outwitting predators. Our children see shapes in the clouds. Civilizations throughout history have celebrated order cycles of the moon, architectural principles of length and height. Statistics can help us interpret which patterns have meaning and which do not. Life is a lottery. Those best placed to play the odds are more likely to come out on top. Statistics can help us assess risk and stay the right side of foolishness. An easy choice is no choice at all. It's the tough ones that matter. How many birds in the bush I needed to trade my bird in the hand. What is the choice that gives the greatest benefit for the smallest cost? How much should we pay to save a life? We may find such calculation hard to stomach, but statistics at least gives us the tools to calculate well. There is something about numbers that gives them psychological power. If an argument is illustrated with a number, it sounds like it's evidence-based. Eight out of ten cats prefer it. Statistics and statistical thinking help us ask which cats did they really prefer it? Prefer it to what? Statistical thinking also gives us the nous to know the limits of what can be calculated. Anyone seems to be able to come up with a number these days. What does it really mean? Does it mean anything at all? Is it just confusing us, trying to pull the wool over our eyes? However, our use of language betrays an antipathy to statistical thinking. Something is just a statistic, cold, impersonal, not something that resonates with warm human psychology. But this reaction misses something profound. Nobel Prize winning psychologist Daniel Kahneman provides many scare stories from all walks of life showing just how poorly we are served if we fail to engage our statistical brain. Statistics are essential to good decision-making. <laughs>